pile of golden <laughs> clutch. <laughs> Drove here from Rawlings. Oh, Raleigh. <laughs> oh, there, yeah. That's yeah. I, was born. I feel like we're a little family in here. I don't know. I just get that vibe. <laughs> I can't see any of you. Hi. Yeah, I Hi. <laughs> Is everyone here? <laughs> Griffin, oh. you did not hear the praise I gave you earlier, but you're like, um, you're awesome. I okay. So live Q and A, guys. Uh, you can. We have some gifts for people who ask questions. Um, I won't tell you which number of questions you will have to ask in order to get the gifts, but we have them. Um, we have uh, vintage hats that um, our organizations made at the time of this film. And we also have a bottle opening magnet that says acting life on it. <laughs> so that's cool. What right. you want to be thinking about before you open a cold one, you know, anything in your arts. Yeah. 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 What's, on the, what's on the hat? I'll just, I'll just grab them. I didn't know this movie would have merchandise. But oh, we, <laughs> we had, we had merchandise, y'all. We really did. We, it's a long story. Um, Cute. Actor life, uh, magnet and bottle opener. Several types of bottle. I don't know if you can see this. Yes. Um, women in film hat. I'm assuming a woman would want this, but you know, whoever you do, you do your thing. Um, and then we got a, a vintage Acting United hat because our nonprofit no longer exists because our investors. You heard the whole story. But this is vintage. This will never. This will never be made again. So they they are yours for the taking. <laughs> All right, so um, let's. I, I, I want to ask Griffin uh, the first question. So, what made you want to work on this film? I read the script. Uh, well, honestly, uh, I remember we had a Zoom call, um, uh, something like that, where we were just talking, and uh, I happened to have been uh, getting interested in the topic of trafficking. Um, because I was thinking about writing a script uh, where that would be like a twist in it or some like big reveal. And then I was like, how about I research this thing before I use it as a plot twist in a movie? And then I found out that, as I learned more about it, I was like, this is cheap, this is dumb. I want to make something that's more real and not, uh, not the word, uh, Hollywoodizing it basically. Mm -hmm. um, and as uh, we talked in our Zoom call, you just happened to say, I'm also interested in that subject too. And I was like, awesome. And then Brooke said that she wrote a script. And I said, this is, this is good. I like this. And then she was like, I want you to direct it. I was like, huh? And, and it was daunting because it's a heavy script. It's a heavy story. Um, and it was uh, going to be a challenge uh, for me. But uh, as we kept doing it, uh, as Brooke's Said that she believed in me, and as the process went forward, and everything was working together, and we got a great cast uh, and a director of photography, my buddy uh, Dylan Kitts. He made Go it Dylan Kitts. Yeah, he's in Florida right now, so uh, pray for him. Uh, he's a. He, uh, I haven't heard too much from him, but uh, yeah, stay safe. Um, but yeah, uh, we got the cast, we got the crew, we got everybody together, and. Uh, yeah, uh, as the process went along, I, I felt more and more confident about it. And I was, because uh, the script was great, it was just all about the execution. And as the execution was going, it got, it turned out to be this. So I think we did pretty well. So, yeah. Woo. We did it. Nailed it. We nailed it. Um, wisdom. So, um, Kind of a long-winded question, but um, how did it feel to portray, portray uh, this character, knowing that it was a real person, um, and getting through those hard scenes? What I mean, what was that process like for you? And also, how did you feel throughout it? Um, re Is this working? Yeah. <laughs> um, going to doing the tour of Wellspring and seeing exactly like how their lives were really helped a lot. Um, because there's, everybody for the most part knows what sex trafficking is and human trafficking, but you don't actually see these women and how they live, they live their lives and go to their facilities and really view what they, 
what they do every single day at, when they're trying to heal. So see that instead of coming up with um, stereotypical ways that they might be traumatized was a huge step for me to be like, oh, this is a little, um, a little more subtle. Uh, it, it's trauma. I don't know if that makes sense necessarily, but it's more, it's more of like it's not, they're not acting out. They're not, they're very just, they hold to themselves a lot of the times um, and keep a lot of things internal. So that was huge for me uh, mm -hmm. that I realized. And then being on a set with these two amazing people, <laughs> I, I felt in, in something that is so traumatizing, I felt so safe where I was able to be vulnerable without, without feeling like I was really in that situation. I, I mean, obviously as an actor, you, you, those, you want to bring the story to life and bring the character to life and really make the audience feel what's going on in the story, but it's hard to do that when you're not actually, you know, dealing with that. So having a safe space was absolutely amazing and it allowed me to really do my job without focusing on, hey, am, am I good? Am I all right? Am I, am, am I safe in this environment? And when I absolutely was. That was the goal. So and I want to, <laughs> I want to say that was all you, Griffin, because yeah. you were the leader on set and that's why why I picked you, because you, you give people, people feel safe around you. I hope. <laughs> if I scared the shit out of them, that would be a, that would be a horrible movie. But yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I actually wanted to follow up your answer with another question, because that's, uh, that's what I uh, wrote down. Um, uh, I was curious, because I kind of let you do your thing on set. I just kind of... Uh, uh, give you a goal every now and then. I uh, talk you through it, and also checked. You know, are you okay crying for a fourth time? Are you, you know, <laughs> like, things. You know, I wanted to make sure you were okay. Uh, but like in the earlier scenes where she's all, when she's closed off and she's uh, just kind of in her own head, um, I, I had a question like, well, what are you? What, what were you thinking about as an actor in those moments? Because that there's not a lot to play on the page really. You Sitting yeah. there, but there's a. There's a um, there. So I remember when you guys told me this actually after, I don't remember why, I don't know how it came up, but we were on set and you were like, yeah, we picked you over everybody else because of the subtleness and it wasn't so, you, you know, the, what I was saying, you're not acting out, you're, you're being subtle and you're keeping everything internal and, and it's really what is coming out through the eyes and all that stuff. And um, what was your question? <laughs> Or, uh, for instance, what were you thinking about in the police? Yeah. Like, uh, like, as an actor, like, what was your intention when you were just uh, still for like the first um, third or quarter of the movie? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I'm a Meisner actor, so I'm very present with uh, being with like my surroundings and everything that's going on. So just trying to put myself in that environment and um, trying to really think about and, and think about going through that, which is traumatizing. But uh, and then having the safe space allowed me to be able to do that without having to do a lot of work to 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 feel like I could be vulnerable in that in that way. Yeah, you like I said, you, you weren't here yet, but I said that she held that like vulnerability the whole time. Like even when she wasn't on camera, a lot of people go inward, but you were so giving the whole time, like you were. A, an angel like sent from above for, for you to be our lead because you not only did a phenomenal job, but you made our lives easier. Yeah. <laughs> That's good teamwork right there. <laughs> yeah, like uh, with the I'm worthy scene, which is, uh, which is what me and Brooke named it because it was like, okay, this is, <laughs> yeah. this is the Emmy, this is the, the Tony, I don't know what award you get for short films, but like this is the scene where uh, she has to nail it. And then, uh, I remember, I think it was after take two or something like that, and like your cheeks are salty and like, <laughs> like, it, like you, you gave your all on that take, and then yeah. I, I asked you if you want to do it again, and then you just quickly just like went, were like, yeah, I'm ready. And I was like, <laughs> okay, yeah. all right. Uh, that was so good. Don't lie to me, because uh, <laughs> I won't know if you're lying or not. Uh, yeah, it was, yeah, the, just your, your commitment to it and the way that you were just able to keep going no matter what was awesome to see. And a huge lifesaver too. And yeah, you're pretty talented. I'm rambling. What's the next question? <laughs>
You're pretty talented. <laughs> you, That's the question. Um, so we'll, we'll take an audience question now. We'll go in between that. Yes. Hi. Wisdom fisherman? Yes. Um, Thank you. And, and speak up. Speak up. I got it. I got it. Can I bring a mic? Is that a thing? Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, just, just, yeah, y'all wearing heels, y'all, okay. <laughs> um, I would like to know, what is the most valuable thing that you learned with, from Elena? From, from um, being on set? No, 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 from your character. Um, oh, that's a hard one. <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, from my character, I would say um, about how, like, how to allow other people in. Um, Cause as you could tell, and she was very much like, I don't trust anybody. Right. I don't trust anybody, I don't care who you are, you can try to be nice to me, I'm not, I'm not here for it. Mm -hmm. And so learning how to, and this is, and I've been through trauma in the last in just a few years since we filmed this, I lost my mother and my father. And so going through that, and not be like being like, okay, like I'm fine, like, go, like not letting people in, um, is something that Elena also yeah. did. And so being able to later on go ahead and be like, you know what, it's okay for me to lean on the people that are here to support me. It's okay for me to be, be not, I don't want to say weak, but yeah, be weak and, and allow other people to lift you up in times where you're not able to do it yourself. Thank you. Yeah. You get a hat for that. <laughs> Do you have another question? Uh, I thought you wanted me to ask. I've got a question. No, <laughs> I was way off. Um, so my question is to Griffin. Um, so I've been on a, a good amount of sets where they were dealing with either vulnerable subjects or through something that is traumatic or something like that. And I have never felt so, and since we were on the set, I've oh. never felt so safe. I have not been on a set yet where I have felt as safe as I was on this one, and it's been three years. That's so. our team, y'all. That was the team. We, we set this far high. So, um, Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, three I'm fine. Years. I'm fine. It's okay. okay. <laughs> three yeah, years of hell. But, um, Jesus. It's just, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't set it like that. But um, just, the, I want to know how, is there like a way that you approached it when you're like, okay, whenever we show up to set, I want to make sure this is what I'm doing. This is, this is the steps. Like, is there... Because a lot of people don't have that skill when it comes to uh, directing of being able to make sure. Because they direct, they say, hey, you know, this is what I want you to do, but are you okay? <laughs> like, are you good? So, yeah. Um, um, how do you explain your process? Uh, <laughs> I don't... Um, uh, I kind of trusted the script because um, the subject matter and the way that we talked through it, and me and Dylan talked through it too, and how we're going to shoot it, and all of that. Uh, like especially the Bible scene was something that we talked through a lot um, to make sure that one we don't cause a child trauma um, yeah. while we're shooting it, um, yeah. and two uh, to make it evocative but not exploited, exploitative. Um, in terms of building a safe set, um, uh, I don't know how to put it other than uh, check in when people need to be checked into, but also trust that if trust that people are strong and they can uh, they can get through things because uh, they're able to do it and they're uh, like I, I think it, it comes with trust. Like if you trust uh, your crew and your cast. They'll trust you back, um, and uh, a, an occasional check-in. Uh, that's that's one thing that I worried about on set was that I was checking in too much, because uh, I, because uh, especially with uh, I think we talked to Rob Wood, the father of the child. Uh, uh, what was her name again? Uh, uh, the Robin, child. Robin, uh, yeah. Robin. Uh, we were uh, shooting with Robin, and uh, I think I checked in three times with him and his wife <laughs> to be like, "This is what we're shooting." And at a certain point, they were like, "It's fine. Just shoot the darn scene." Uh, <laughs> yeah, and let me just note, like, um, I don't know if you remember or not, but she wasn't actually there for everything he was saying. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, yeah. Is it looking through the camera? It was like, okay, I know exactly what's going on, but for her, but for her, 
Uh, she just kind of was just whipping her hair back and forth. <laughs> That's literally one of my directions to her whenever she was, uh, uh, whenever we had to get that stuff. We're just, hey, just, you know, play around with your hair. That's it. Yeah. That's all you got to do. And then we cut it together. So. Uh, and it's this yeah. was darker than you're going to see on YouTube. YouTube, you can see a lot more, just saying. Mm -hmm. It was a lot darker up here than on our monitors that you will have at home. Yeah, it was an artistic choice. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, what's going on? So, yeah, whatever. So, yeah, how did you, I know we talked a lot about this. How did you handle directing a young child, especially through those kind of scenes? Um, just... Treat it like play um, is what I tried to tell myself. Just to treat it as I like, you know, ignore the subject matter whenever talking to her. She's, you know, she doesn't need to get it. Like the uh, the way that I looked at it was just, uh, but talk to her like an adult um, and uh, just, you know, tell her what to do, but also make it like a game almost. Like uh, when she's being kidnapped in the uh, parking lot with the giant bird. Um, we would, uh, I would chase her, or she would chase me, vice versa, down the uh, parking lot whenever we would reset for it, um, which helped gain a little bit of urgency, and it would like pick up her pace a little bit. Um, yeah. Uh, speaking of children, I actually have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, so the scene where you're dragging hand in hand a child down the street in the middle of Atlanta, how was that? Like, uh, cause, <laughs> how was that? Cause, because I was, I was on the other side of the road, and I was just yelling at Dylan, like, you know, keep up, keep up. Like, you know, she's, she's cooking, just go. Like, uh, you know, how was it? I mean, <laughs> I, was, um, I was with some friends earlier this week, and one of them, I, I was like, yeah, my premiere is this Friday. And she goes, oh, the one where you're, like, stealing that girl? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm a victim. Like, <laughs> but... Um, yeah, that was that. See, we filmed that the last day, right? That was the last one we filmed, I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was your last day. On yeah. Set. Well, yeah. <laughs> that was your last day. <laughs> that was my last day. Yeah. Um, it was. It was. As you can see in the BTS film, it was um, being able to have a wonderful scene partner. She's back there somewhere. We kind of just Woo! joked around and played, and then whenever it was time for the camera to start rolling we got into that mindset but it, it was honestly when you have a great team it's not as it's it's easy kind of yeah <laughs> having yeah. having a great great team um crew cast great energy on set um it, it makes everything a lot easier and we had great energy shout out okay if you were cast on this um yeah we're, we'll come up here and take like a photo together afterwards but please like everyone just give a round of applause for this cast <laughs> Amazing. Um, let's take another audience question. Yes. <laughs> oh, there was. Oh, I'm sorry. There's more hands than I thought. Okay. Yeah. Y you. Yes. Okay. I can't see. I was wondering what did the bird symbolize in the movie because it was shown in the beginning and the end. Yeah, that wasn't in the script. Um, <laughs> d Griffin and and Dylan did magic and they were just seeing we literally just saw this on the side of the building we were filming at and then you tell the rest because i don't really know all of them. uh zoe the uh, um art department uh she uh she created a flyer uh that is, is she here yeah yeah she? hi zoe <laughs> Hello. we killed it uh yeah the uh, uh we were like make this and uh, she was like, okay. And then she whipped up, I think, like three versions or uh, two or three. Uh, I'm trying to see her. Oh, I was like, no one can see your face. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, uh, it, yeah, the, uh, yeah, um, yeah. So she whipped up like uh, three or four versions, and then we said that one looks good, and then we were able to put that into the first scene uh, to for her to react to, and like it all just kind of clicked into place. Um, oh yeah. So it wasn't. I, didn't I get it. Her, but well, then in the script, at least, yeah. in the true story that I had the honor of hearing, um, again, the reason why I picked this story was because it was the most like mysterious and like okay, that's really interesting, and you can put a lot of other stories into it. So this was actually a true story, and this is how this woman got found: was she was 
bringing a woman, a, a girl in, a young girl, who was screaming for her parent, and then all of a sudden it was just like something clicked, and she stopped in the middle of the street, and someone helped her and brought her to um, the LA Dream Center, actually. So it wasn't in Atlanta, that was in LA. But um, same kind of facility as Wellspring. And so in the script, it was emotional click, where she was like, oh, what am I doing? And I'm, I have this girl, and she lets go of the girl, and she falls down, and that was true. But you wanted actual visual represent, representation for the audience. So that kind of answers that question. So the visual representation of something clicking within this person who has been trafficked, and again, that is very rare, this story of actually being kidnapped and, and stuck in a place. 90% of the people at Wellspring Living, of the, the children and anyone who's gone through that program, it's manipulated, malip, manipulative and exploited people who are still going to school, who are still living with a lot of the times their traffickers, their pimps, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so this was a rare story that you could put a lot of others into. But um, the script was more emotional click, and you guys made that visual, and it was beautifully done. So good job. Yeah. It was like a flashback to when she was kidnapped, kind of. Yeah, yeah it, it's the bookend of like, I am not this person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I also saw it as I was editing it, uh, like, as I was making excuses, I guess, for it, uh, I was like, what is this bird? Uh, but like, at the end of the at the end of the day, I thought like uh, uh, the flyer showing the bird, like she, like Elena probably has no emotional connection to that actual image, like in and of itself, but it's in her memory subconsciously, and like, like, and that just like flicks something off where it's like, oh, that's the last time that I felt semi-safe or had you know, a father, stuff like that, like. Uh, yeah, so it, it happened on accident, and this mic is really, really <laughs> weird. Uh, it might be my ring. I've seen a flash of freedom, my boy. Mm -hmm. Flash of freedom on the bird. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We'll go with that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that, that's another that's good point. <laughs> it's up to your own interpretation, man. Yeah. yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. That's what I saw, too. Free fly. Is there another question? Yeah, who, another question. Yes. Um, I know that when you were uh, discussing uh, your, your own story, you mentioned that uh, through suffering you found healing. That seemed to uh, strike a chord with me. Have you been influenced by any of the Stoics or Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning? Because uh, I know that's a book that really uh, was helpful for me in looking at that. Is, is, is that one in part of your repertoire? Is it biblical, or where did you? That's really funny because yes and yes. Um, both of those are biblical concepts, but also I have um, found that Stoicism has echoed biblical truths. Um, what I've found true to, in Stoicism has echoed what I've, what I've been studying in, in the Bible. So yeah, did I, did I answer your question? But yeah, um, that's a really powerful book um, and I think everyone should read it. Uh, I don't know if I answered your question, but. Um, Stephanie. Um, so when, when you had the opportunity to interview the victims, how did they feel about wanting to share their stories and for you to create a film that would highlight you know, a lot of what they may have easiest part was um, a lot of them are, have already been public about it for so long that you, I mean, some of these you can find um, because they've been interviewed by either news stations or what have you, um, or their public knowledge because um, like the sting that was rated, um, A20, A21 has used that one a lot um, by the, that person. And then um, uh, things like 
the girl who was the police kind of got to the house and she was tied up and whatever. That was awful. It was really hard to write this. Gosh. Um, that one is readily available, like, um, and was, was told, like, in parts on the news. But those people, like, they want the word to get out. So that person had been trafficked through, through a, another high schooler that was in high school with her and would get women or girls to come to her house to hang out, and then it would be this group of guys. Um, so a lot of these things are, are very public. If you look for it, you can find it pretty easily. But, um, but yeah, that, that made it easy, is a lot of them are very vocal about it. Um, as far as the main story, I heard and we worked with, um, I worked with this woman who worked at the LA Dream Center. So that was the, the main part of Elena's story. And um, hers really hadn't been told. So it was just a matter of like, you ask and pray, they say yes. And some of it, it's like they say no, but, but if you change their names and you don't really say much more about the information and they're fine with it. So I can't speak too much about that one. She doesn't want her real name out there or, or anything like that. So you just change things and they'll be more comfortable. So I'm just going to say this. I, I was <clears throat> impressed, regardless of your personal relationship in this movie, the fact that you were able to make this movie based on the people that suffered. I, I'm just really impressed and blown away with what you guys did with this. I mean, it, it's, it's absolutely, I'm, I have nothing to do with you. Guys. I, <laughs> yeah, I, didn't I, you I, walk I, in I, here? Do you have a name? No, 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 no idea. <laughs> It's That's amazing. It was beautifully done. The directory, the, the cinematography, everything was fantastic. It was beautiful. It was Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Kevin. Yes. Thank you. There's one back there. Camera. <laughs> Hi. Um, so, what was the what was one of the hardest film days, and then what was one of the most like I guess easy going and. <clears throat> Oh, let's answer this individually. Wisdom, you go first, and then we'll... You think we're going to have the same answers or no? Yeah, that's, that'll be interesting. I think we're all going to have... I think we might have similar answers. And then, uh, Michelle, what time is it? Seven Not six. early enough. Seven six? Okay, we're, we're good, we're good. All right, we have time. Um, we started off with the stuff that was a little bit easier, and we, we literally... They, I think on the last... The, when we filmed the I Am Worthy scene, they're like, okay, today's the scene. That was like the last scene. I think the I am worthy scene was rough um, and I'm happy that we filmed it last. Well, it wasn't last, but it was the last day because I was able to live in her world a little bit before we got to that. Um, and then I was able to also get to know a little bit of, the, of all my castmates, my lovely ladies and my gentlemen. <laughs> I was able to get to know them and, um, and spend a little more time with them. And so the I Am Worthy scene was, I will say that one was rough because, you know, that's a confidence thing. It's a, a belief thing. It's a, it's a manipulative thing that was going on with her, um, with Elena. And so that scene was hard because I'm a very confident person, a very confident woman, and so to, to put myself in that situation was a little bit rough, because I don't feel like that at all. Um, so do, being there and believing that and, and saying that over and over and over again and uh, trying to take myself through that journey of actually believing what I was saying after I said it so many times was wonderful, and Leslie, who played Vanya, um, really gave me what I needed in that scene to be able to, to work off of her and help me, take me through that journey. Are you saying that it was hard for you to feel worthy? Or are you saying no. the opposite? That it was hard for you to go back to where you feel? Yeah, it was hard for me to go back to, wisdom, you're not worthy? <laughs> I was like, excuse well, no, no, we're not, we're, no. And no, so, I'm the shit. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's one of the hardest things, like, also trained in Meisner. Yeah. Meisner. Yeah. It's, like, one of the hardest things to go back to where you feel 
like you hate yourself yeah because you don't want to go back there but you that's why that's why we picked we picked you because you were willing to put yourself there but it's hard to like basically take what you know as yourself and your healed self and be like I'm gonna put you aside yeah and I'm gonna I'm gonna go through hard stuff right now yeah and feel that and you did that you did it Woo! Like, oh, <laughs> you did great. <laughs> you did awesome. Um, Way better than. Um, hardest and easiest day. Uh, easiest day was de- it was definitely the therapy scene. Uh, uh, where the circle scene. Uh, mm. that one was pretty. Uh, I think it was. I had the second or first day. Like it was just. That was the hardest scene. No, that's the easiest. Oh. Easiest okay. Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was easiest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was. That was simple. Uh, uh, like uh, even like some of my friends from film school uh, came down to the set to help out that day, and that was like a good boost for the to start it off uh, for me at least. Um, and also just everybody was killing it because like uh, two or three people had close-ups in it that were like you know nail it please please God nail it I know you can please and you, they, they killed did. it they you guys killed it they, out of the park yeah. home run <laughs> guys give a give a round of applause they're here tonight like yeah. a lot of them yeah. Woo! Yeah. Um, hardest scene was um, well like okay there's one there's one day that was like objectively hard which was the uh, one with Robin and the Bible that that scene and then because that was like a crunched day where we were shooting at that house and then we were going back to Wellspring to shoot something else. Uh, it was exhausting. It was a, yeah, it was the longest day and it was the, uh, it was uh, the day where I was like, okay, we really gotta get down the line. Yeah, I think we had a night up. shoot too. Huh? We had a night shoot that night. Yeah, right? it, that was the parking lot scene. That, that was what was uh, yeah. right after it. Um, yeah, that was jumbled as hell. Um, <laughs> but uh, the one that, uh, I'll say the un- unworthy scene, I was like a two minds of it. Cause I was like trying to, <laughs> Be gentle, like be cool, just like make her make her feel good, and then I'm behind the camera, and, she, and I'm like, she's crying, yes, she's got it, she's got this, she's got this. Show me, show me what she got. Uh, so yeah. like it, keeping that up, and uh, uh, and also keeping the set generally light while we're doing a a, a hard subject matter was uh, an interesting process to be in, and uh, it was awesome to do it with you and everybody else, you know. So mm-hmm. that's it. I think I gave like three answers. You do. You get four. Well, one day I had to leave set because I cut my hand open, um, and then I was like, "Oh, we we need um we need an emergency first aid aid kit on set." So I left, and then you called me twice when I was gone, and you guys were like asking a question about the script, and I didn't answer because I was like, "I gotta take care of my hand," but I didn't tell you guys what was going on because I was like, "I'm keeping the fires to myself. I'm gonna put them out very." Silently. I'm just now finding this out. What the fuck? No, I told you. <laughs> when did you tell me that? <laughs> when I got back. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Anyway. We just moved on to the next scene. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, I told uh, you. Yeah, yeah. You, um, yeah. We didn't. You, you were just gone. And yeah, like, I just Everything left. was fine mostly. Um, <laughs> yeah. But like, yeah. But you the, were a I think. Well, I think the same day we shot my scene and. I think that was the hardest day, honestly, because not only did I have to be like, okay, I'm thinking about everyone's safety, and we didn't, don't, don't arrest me. We didn't have a permit to shoot in the middle of the street. Yeah. Um, Look, you gotta, sometimes for film, you gotta break the law a little bit. We, you're supposed to have a permit, and the authorities should know that you're there and I was just like you know what we'll do it really quick and we'll do it in a jaywalk so technically it's not illegal yeah. and um, she's just pretending she's not stealing a real yeah. kid like you can tell right like, but but like we will do it right in the future I promise yeah. <laughs> um, I promise this uh, isn't Borat we'll do it for yeah we'll do it cool next time yes so. um, anyway that was the hardest day because we actually had to reshoot my scene because I was such a producer mind I was not an actor mind and I was so bad that they, we had to refilm it because of how horrible I was. Because I was like, okay, where are the cars? I'm watching for cars. Okay, you guys are good to film. I'm watching for cars. I'm work- watching for cars. And that also was a hard hitting day because they, people across the corner, they could hear. She's very loud. Um, man, those screams, like, and they could hear someone saying, help, help. And they could not see the camera from around the corner. And so it really hurt because no one did anything. 
And it's like, this is why we're making this film. If you hear something, are you going to help? Um, the bystander syndrome is like, oh, you just assume someone's going to help. But it was literally the reason why we made this. It was, I was seeing it. Like, no one did anything. People were just eating, having a good time talking to each other. And they can hear this kid crying out for help um, around the corner. And they could hear. <laughs> like, you could, you know you could, they could hear. Um, <laughs> So that was hard. And then the, the funnest day was um, the, well, that, that's, that's a hard thing to answer because I really loved every single day shooting with you guys. You guys were, um, like we were like a little family and I, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, it was awesome. Uh, I think the, the, maybe the last day because I just cherished it so much because you guys were awesome to work with. The ice cream scene was fun. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say that's your hardest, because every... Ice cream. Ice cream. Ice, ice cream or ice cream? <laughs> Both. Ice, ice cream. How, okay, so wisdom, first question. Uh, how do you feel about the, about the flavored chocolate? Second of all, how, uh, how many of those close-ups, after you did your, you know, your Oscar-worthy acting, you immediately then <laughs> into a little plastic bag. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. We had a spit like bucket. Chocolate. Yeah. I, I don't like chocolate ice cream. Ah. I mean, I like them a little more than I did three years ago, but like, I don't like chocolate ice cream, chocolate cake, <laughs> chocolate cake. I'm a vanilla and strawberry person. Um, so that's number one. <laughs> I thought you would say that was your hardest day because that was like, you no. guys take it out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we had multiple shots of putting it in my mouth, spitting it out, because you know, I could eat all that. But yeah, that was fun. <laughs> um, yeah, let's get another question. Um, is that Rebecca? Yes. Yeah, Rebecca. That one. Can I ask? Duh. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, this goes back to the scene you were just talking about where Wisdom goes on the street and you come at her with your car. How did you guys rehearse that? Because you literally had to, like, she falls and then you have to stop. We, yeah. the car was not there when she was there. It was just split screen. Oh. So in editing, I think I did that. Okay. Um, I, like, probably 20. Um, uh, too many. Uh, it took like uh, four takes with the car. Yeah, it was basic, basically film her falling, film the car going forward. And, and don't move just, the camera. And don't move the, don't move the goddamn camera. Yeah, we were not unsafe on set. We just... Yeah, we didn't almost... We didn't have a permit. We didn't almost kill her. Uh, we, we made her look like she was committing a crime, which isn't as bad, I guess, but she didn't die. So, you know, we're all good. Uh, um, and then it, yeah. uh, Tom... Tom... Yeah, first of all, the acting and the dialogue were great. My question to you is just kind of an aside. How did you de determine, you know, your locations? You had a lot of interesting locations in the film. So going into it, how did you kind of go about it? I thought you, you, you made some really good choices. How did you, how did you go about that? Um, joint question, I guess. So I lived here, and he didn't live here. So we had I had to um, look at it a lot of different places. Um, I worked with a lot of realtors in town, actually, to be like, hey, uh, we need a really nice house. And we had um, uh, Miss Hoffman at the time, just amazing woman, just opened her house to us. And she happened to have a secret shelf room. That was amazing. And then we just put the guy who played the doctor, um, the, he was pretty dark in this, this version, but you'll see more of him on the, the YouTube monitor. Whatever monitor you use, it'll be brighter. Um, he played the doctor, we put up pictures of him and you can see that when the shelf opens. And she had an unfinished attic, and she had everything we needed for that house. It was just like a blessing from above. Like, yeah. wow. Yes, um, and yeah, you can speak more on, we got, we got a, a church to open up their, I don't think they're in, they're in business anymore, business. They're not in ministry anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Not ordained anymore. Yeah. <laughs> ordained. <laughs> yes, that word. And then, um, do you want to add on that? Well, yeah, uh, we got that church, uh, I'm going to say last minute. Like, it was, oh, like a, it right. was like a week before or something like that. Yeah, and our like, locations I, dropped the week before, too. Yeah. So everything was against us. Yeah, we had a nice really nice church uh, that we literally walked through. I drove all the way from Raleigh to Atlanta. We did a walkthrough of it and I felt confident in it. I was like, okay, we're down, we're gonna do this. And then like a week before uh, shooting, 
uh, uh, we were still waiting on budget too. Like, we, like the the location dropped, and we were like, okay. And I've yeah. and, and like I'm just in Raleigh, like just like you know I'm ready for the film. Like I have all my notes and I'm mentally prepared, and I got the script and everything. Like I I am pretty squared away. And then I'm thinking about her down here in the muck, like trying to find another fucking location because there's no way like I can location scout. Like it was. Yeah, and, and you pushed through and found another church. Not only one that was, you know. Shout out to Jeremy and Lauren Ezel. Uh, they got us that location by speaking to someone they knew who then spoke to the church, and it was amazing. So thank you to you guys. I don't know. They're probably watching online. But yeah. Yeah, that's just one of the things. Like, it, it happened to work so well, even though it was so last minute. Like, it feels like almost half the things in filmmaking are just accidental. <laughs> like, they just happen to you and not. Uh, because you force it, and it's, it was really, yeah. Was yeah, and then that place. church also had the room where it looked like we could set it up like a police center, a police, <laughs> and then and then also like that break room it was all the same place. Yeah. It was just a huge blessing. The magic of a poorly lit brick wall and a nice uh, little break room is, uh, yeah. you can do a lot with a little. You can do a yeah. lot. And you did a great job visualizing that and, and making it happen with your vision. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You, you, you gave me the tools, so thank you. Uh, um, let's just agree to agree. Oh. Yeah. Um, I do, I do want to note something that um, really I was very concerned about was that scene, the Bible scene, because people don't know, and especially Christians, they're like, oh, how could you use the Bible for that scene? I had some people not show up because of that tonight. They're like, you twisted scripture. I'm like, no, these traffickers twist scripture. And they specifically, and everyone here should know this, they specifically twist scripture so that the girls will be scared of anyone coming up to them saying, hey, Jesus loves you. Can I help you out? They trigger these girls to anything that, that would have any connotation, especially from the Bible or anything that people, usually people who um, are missionaries or Christians, they're going to be the ones who want to help these girls out or um, a lot of that happens a lot with girls who are pimped out and are on the street. So there was an organization I worked with in college called Freedom. So T-H-R-E-E-D-O-M. They hand out lipstick. They don't talk about Jesus, even though that's their heart behind it is to help these girls because of that. But they hand out lipstick with the hotline number or a number they can text instead of saying, Instead of trying to minister to these girls, they just help them get out of it um, with like a lipstick or a chapstick. They just hand it like, hey girl, here's a chapstick, and they'll have a way for them to get out with that text, um, something they can text or call. So that's why I, I really was passionate about keeping that scene in. Obviously for schools and after school problem, we'll, we'll cut that. But, um, but yeah, that's, I was very passionate about keeping that in this film because that is what happens. They're triggered if you hear the word God, if you hear the word Jesus, anything like that. They are taught to go straight back to their trafficker and do not talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the actual reality? I mean, yeah. Do you know that from, from? From working with the Freedom, the organization. Yeah. That, and so girls that come out, um, that's, Especially from a young age. Yeah. And people right. should know about that. And that's what if we do a feature film, we'll be able to talk about that more. But it's a short film, so it's kind of hard to get that from that. Um, and also, we're going to do a lot more projects. We're going to do a lot more media projects. Uh, Butterworthmedia.com is already up, ready to go. We need producers. We need writers. We need um, actors. We need venues. We're going to do stage plays. We have that script ready to go um, to advocate for homeless veterans and cancer survivors based on a true story. And we're ready to go. Oh, yeah, she read it. <laughs> oh, yeah. She, oh, yeah. Yep. Um, so uh, question, for, um, question for you, Griffin. Um, what did you find? And we're going to wrap up, so get, get your last questions ready. Um, what did you find was the heart of the script for you? Like, what actually struck you about it? I know trafficking is something that you were interested in um, telling stories about, but 
you said something that was really interesting to me once. You said um, that it had heart behind it, but what do you mean by that? Like what, what specifically made you want to direct this besides just the trafficking aspect? I, <clears throat> when I read it, I appreciated the, the nuance and the, the, the contradictions within it that were uh, present, uh, that speaking dialectically. I, I like that we're telling a story about someone who was trafficking in the beginning, we find out is a victim of uh, trafficking herself and how that process of uh, uh, rekindling herself in a way, uh, how, that, how that was the structure of it and how we weren't, we weren't like just showing someone sat on the street who gets picked up and you know the yeah. audience is immediately supposed to feel bad for her. Like we're actually showing that like people who are in the system as well of trafficking and who are exploited, they, bec they become exploiters sometimes too. And it's a reciprocal, uh, it repeats itself over and over again. And that, I feel like that's important to know because it's a systemic issue. It's like, it's something where, you know, there's no good guys or bad guys. Like, the, like there are definitely worse people, mostly men, but like there are people in it that, uh, that need to be helped and need to be educated or need to be given a helping hand, which is what Leslie is in the film and the, that facility. Like, it's, it, it just had nuances to it that I thought um, were important and, didn't, and made it more than just a PSA. Like, it's actually a, it's human and it shows that even if you might look at someone and think like, you know, how could they do that? Well. Everybody learns something from someone else. It's, you know, we're all connected in that way, and that's why I, that's why I wanted to take it on. I, also, the Bible nuance was also something that I uh, appreciated because uh, I'm personally an atheist, um, but I am friendly with uh, a lot of Christians, and I and I engage with a lot of Christian discourse on social issues. And there are some that are more sympathetic to the trafficking uh, situation. Uh, the the uh, there, the, there are some that have a more nuanced approach to it that I really appreciate. There are others. I watched a documentary. I won't name it, just you know, for you know, just to be polite. But it sucked. Uh, it was this. <laughs> it was just this film where it was like a bunch of. Uh, uh, it had very valid uh, experiences from people that were victims of trafficking, but they were spinning all of it with the editing to make it look like, oh, if only people would find Jesus then they would be all good and all this stuff. And I'm like, and like, there's more to it than that, in my opinion. There's it's like what you we were talking about, like you, people need a helping hand. They need to be given an opportunity, they need to be given resources, they need to be given material solutions, not just preached at of like, you know, if you didn't act like such a slut, then maybe you wouldn't get traffic. Like nobody oh, needs that. Yeah. And, like, and, and you wrote a human script about that. So yeah, the I script, like specifically what, what led me to that prayer of like, God, what do I do with the suffering was that person that I had a breakup with called the women in the film whores. And I was like, this, something really bugs me about that. What is that? And it was because they're not, they're not whores, they're people. They're people who have been, some, in a lot of cases, manipulated, coerced into these, this industry, or they had no other choice. Um, and some of them are trying to find sexual healing through it. Let's not ignore that. But, um, but yeah, they're not whores. They're, they're people and they're daughters. They're somebody's daughters. And uh, yeah, it, like what did Jesus do in the Bible? Jesus, Jesus didn't just preach at people. He healed people. He like physically healed people. And yes, he spoke to their spiritual side too and said, I, I am living water. Come to me where you, and you'll never thirst. So yes, it's, there's that spiritual side where you're, you're, you're going to find fulfillment and joy and peace and the fruits of the spirit. But he healed people too. Those are the two things he did when people were desperate. So it wasn't like he was, he was doing what a lot of Christians do, unfortunately, which is um, they do, they do, um, there's, oh, I'm about to ramble, but, um, I'm going to not ramble, but, uh, but yeah, they, it's the, it's not just spiritual. It's also physical. And that's literally what Jesus did. It was, he did both. Yeah. Christians, a lot of Christians say, join my team basically. And it's just kind of, yeah, it's a put off like Jesus, it's a turn off. Jesus, this month, this guy walked into Jerusalem with a, 
on a donkey, not a horse, a donkey, <laughs> and he said, I'll help you guys out. He washed the feet of people that that guy that you were dating would probably call a whore. He washed her feet. He, cl he cured a guy of blindness. Yeah, yeah. He drank with the boys and he talked about God. He like, drank with the boys. <laughs> the first miracle he did was turn water into wine. Like, let's be honest here. Um, yeah, he was a very compassionate guy, and he was he was uh, he was friends with sinners and sufferers. He was right? A feminist. Yeah, he was a he, he was a feminist who hung out with the bros. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, sorry. Um, sorry to do a sermon, to you guys. A sermon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just got one more question for you. Yeah. Like, where did you draw? empathy and the drive for that Her last course. question that was absolutely beautiful I mean what you yeah. did uh, we'll do one more one more as an, Two more or, as an actress for that was absolutely oh, thank you. spectacular yes thank you first of all that means a lot um when I was doing my uh when I did this audition actually before I sent it off I was doing that it took a while for me to to do this audition first of all when I was doing when I was filming it um, I did it with my roommate, who's also, or my old roommate, she's, she's an actor as well, and a lot of the things she gave me was being present and stuff like that, and, and um, to really take in what they've done. So what, I think that was the big, just pulling it from the first time I even got the script to do the audition, and, and, just, and also researching and not just assuming that what these women go through and how they act and how they live their everyday life, actually researching and doing the tour and interviewing and um, going to where they live and seeing you know their school and their bedrooms and their um, and how they interact with each other was a huge difference because before that I, I didn't really know what I was doing I mean I had sympathy for her but I didn't know um, I, I, I've never thank God I've never experienced anything like this I didn't you know I want to honor the fact that this is a true story instead of just being sympathetic on set or being sad on set. I wanted to really honor the way that they live their life and, and how they how they actually heal. So I would say being able to to get a glimpse of that, even just for a little bit, going to interviews and, and touring the um, Wellspring facility was a huge step for that. All right, that's a hell of a question to end yeah. on. Hell, good job, wasn't it? Christine? Christine, 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 hell yeah. Christine. Well Christina? done. Christine. 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 Go ahead. Why me first? Can y'all go first? Okay. Um, uh, yeah, are you good? Okay. Oh, I had nothing to say. Doing, um, uh, especially if it's, uh, I've never dealt with something that was based off a true story. So doing my research and not assuming was a huge thing. If I ever do get the opportunity to honor someone's real life, um, being able to either interview them, research them, or someone that's in a similar situation, I think it's something that is super important rather than just assuming whatever you may see. So I, I'll say I'll take that into something like that. Yeah. I'll say uh, I, <clears throat> I had to learn a little bit of uh, restraint doing this because, uh, uh, and like me and Brooke like uh, had a conversation uh, close before, like I think it was during the location scout for the church that slipped through our fingers um the where i wanted to do more or like there were things that i was having apprehensions about there was like basically i wanted to make the film bigger or make it have certain uh things in it to make it more layered and uh first of all she gave me like the, a big boost that was like serious she was like Good. I can't, it was two years ago, so I, I'm paraphrasing, but she basically said, shut up, I asked you to do a job for a reason, I know you can do it, so just fucking do it. And, what? and it was, it was, what? What did I say? You, you didn't say, you didn't say, uh, oh, word. oh, I know what you're talking about. When we were sitting in Applebee's, I think, or something, Yeah. Some restaurant. Yeah, yeah you yeah. were like, you were having doubts about um, your, your abilities, and I was like, I hired you for a reason, and I know you can do it, so I, maybe I did say all that, but like, I was like, <laughs> no, I was like, I know you can do this that's why I picked you yeah I, I added his ass to it but yeah you did and it was it warmed my heart and I went home and I was like okay you know what she's right fuck it I got this um uh but also with this film I had to learn that like what was causing me all of that anxiety was that I wanted to do more with it and it's like 
with a film that's based on a true story and based on something that I think is an important issue, all that stuff, you can't cover everything. Uh, and that's okay, because what we're covering uh, here, yeah. what we're covering here is solid and it's true to life and she uh, researched the shit out of it. And you know, the, 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 it, what is here is totally fine and I just gotta trust what I have in front of me to uh, make it as good and as evocative as possible. And uh, yeah, and I'm taking that with every project that I could do going forward to not try to bloat it and make it, it doesn't have to be the trafficking movie. It can be a trafficking the. movie that is that has its own <clears throat> twist on it. So, um, and that's with every other film going forward, basically. I feel I felt rejuvenated after making this film, honestly. So that helps me answer my the question for me because that conversation changed everything for me because I was like, I think God gave me a gift not only for like getting people together and seeing their talents but also like seeing potential in people where they may not see it themselves or potential in things. And I could see that you are a leader and you are a director and a good one at that, a damn good one at that. And so you needed to believe that and step into that, step into your full, now I wouldn't say potential because it's already there. It's not like you have potentials, but you have that and you have that ability um, and same thing with wisdom, like you guys are so talented and if you just, just believe in yourself, it's going to happen. Like you make it happen. And I think that that's my gift as, a, as the producer on this film was believing in people and kind of being like not a, I wouldn't say a leader, but, but helping other people lead and just pointing out like encouraging giving encouraging words so that I think I'm just going to take that and run with it for the other things that I do. Um, You're like an architect. You, an you architect. set everything to, no, seriously, you set it up to, you set up everything so that not, everybody can fall into place in the places that they have to be. And like, you I'm know, not good at math, man. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, one of, you, one of God's gifts that he gave you was that you can roll up your sleeves and say, believe in yourself, just do it, motherfucker. Do you look like a boxer? Brooke was like, she just kept coming up to me, she's like, do you need anything? Are you all right? Like, you're, you're so good, you're so talented. I was like, I was like, no. <laughs> Stop being so nice Thank to me. You. I, like, I just didn't know how to receive all, so yes, all, yes, I agree. And um, yeah, I can honestly call you guys my friends now. Like, you guys are awesome. And Griffin, you even ask me how I'm doing sometimes, and I just really appreciate that. Um, and I, again, like, I'm so honored and blessed. Um, is there any last words you guys want to say before we head out? Thank you all for coming. Woo. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Woo. Any last After words? Hurricane. Yeah. You made it. <laughs> yeah, I drove through part of it to get here. Uh, yeah. yeah this the, the, here's what I'll say. My last word. I drove through part of a hurricane to get here. Six hours. I waited two and a half hours at QT Quick Trip to get some fucking gas. And uh, finally. Oh my made gosh. It finally made it here, and it was it was it was worth it. Uh, the multiple weeks that we worked on this. It was all worth it because of this night. So, um, final word: um, share this film. It's gonna be live on YouTube, I think, in like ten minutes. <laughs> so, shit. Oh shit! Okay. I, yeah, it's happening. But this will not be the school version. The school version will be released on Monday on the same YouTube channel, Butterworth Media, on YouTube. Um, and if you want to donate to our next project, it's on the forms. Final word, like this is, this is it, guys. Take this form, take these posters. If you see extras and you know people who, did, who weren't able to make it here or can make a difference, ways to spread awareness, pass them out to people. Um, pictures tonight, if you got a picture, um, I'm going to give you guys my email right now. So if you guys want your pictures, get ready to write that down, because I'm going to give you guys a Google Drive file link. My email, you can email <laughs> Brooke Butterworth, B-R-O-O-K-E, Butterworth, M as in management, G as in Gmail, M as in management, T as in tech, at gmail.com. Brooke Butterworth, MGMT at gmail.com. That's my personal email. Um, the, the business one you can find on butterworthmedia.com. Um, and 
yes. Um, <laughs> and I, there will be a, a Google Drive where you can get all the photos from tonight. Um, and we're going we're gonna to tell stories that matter, y'all. We have scripts ready to go, and uh, we're excited. We need producers. We need, we need actors. We need writers. Spread the word. But most importantly, um, they're going to be projects that are advocacy projects. We're going to advocate for important causes. So thank you guys so much for coming. Share these posters. And let's make a difference. <laughs>